I've been explaining, I think, why <clears throat> marriage and why intact families matter for individual kids in a sense. We also think have to recognize how what's happening in our families matters for our communities and for our country. There's a sort of idea, I think, in American life that sort of what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? That was sort of what happens in our, our own worlds, our own families, sort of stays in our own world, stays in our own families. It's a private thing, you know? Leave me alone, you know? I can do what I want to do. Well, when it comes to at least family life, that doesn't, really kind of, doesn't really fit the empirical reality. Because when you look at things like the dramatic increase in child poverty, for instance, from the 70s to the 1990s, you know, as more and more people kind of elected to, to sort of to do their own thing, when it came to sort of marriage and family life, um, you know, their kids would often pay a financial price for that. And their communities would pay a, a price financially for that. And the country paid a price financially as well, as we saw a dramatic increase in child poverty because of shifts in family structure here in America. Or consider income inequality, you know, a major issue uh, for the left especially today. And what we're seeing is that you know, families in sort of the yellow and the red portion of this figure down here, um, you know, in the upper and, and upper, upper strata, you know, are doing better um, relative to working class and poor Americans especially. And a good portion of that story is related to shifts in the economy that I talked about just a few minutes ago. But it's also the case, too, that the changing character of American families is also driving income inequality. And so Bruce Western, for instance, who has been at Harvard, is now at Columbia, has written about the way in which the increasing share of single parent families among working class and poor Americans is basically reducing their access to income and assets in ways that are fueling economic inequality um, in America. So again, part of the story here is not just about shifts in the economy, it's also about shifts in our families that are leading to more economic inequality in American society. And then finally, in terms of just the community story here tonight, I could, in, in the q and I'm happy to talk about other community effects of all this, but it's also I think, important to recognize that the health of the American dream is directly connected to the health of families in communities across the US. And this scatter plot is kind of showing this, you know, um, with um, a different x and y axis trend. Now, before I kind of kind of jump into this the scatter plot, I want to kind of just ask you like if you think about the major metropolitan areas in America, where do you think poor kids have the greatest shot at realizing the American dream economically that is going from the bottom 20th you know, percentile to the top 20th percentile as adults. So it's going from rags to riches, growing up poor, becoming rich. In which major metropolitan area do you think kids are most likely to do this in the US? Salt Lake City, yes. And I have a little <laughs> picture here of Salt Lake here up on, the, up on the screen. So this research done by Raj Chetty, who is at Harvard in economics, is looking again at all this, this kind of stuff ecologically environmentally. And what he's showing us in his work is that both actually at the neighborhood level and at the metropolitan area level, that kids who are growing up in communities with more two-parent families who are growing up poor are much more likely to be doing well financially as adults. So there's something about having lots of neighbors of stable two-parent families that seems to benefit kids who are growing up poor, whether or not their parents are together or in a single parent household. And his research indicates that family structure is one of the strongest correlates of upper mobility um, in communities across America. And I've actually looked at his, he's got some new data on neighborhoods. And I find once again, when you kind of look at a more um, <clears throat> granular measure of kind of the, the community environment, that it's also the case, too, again, that family structure is one of the best predictors of upper mobility for poor kids um, in neighborhoods across the US. So to kind of put this all together, the bottom line here, from an ecological or environmental or communal or country perspective, is that if you care about poverty 
if you care about in income inequality, um, if you care about kind of the health of the American dream, you should be also concerned about the health um, of American families.